Hello. Hello, everyone. Welcome, Biangle. Welcome, Radimeku. Welcome, Aleph. And welcome, anyone viewing anonymously. Welcome back to Cyclonials. Thank you for the picture context for your statement, Aleph. Um. Now is as good a time as any to mention that if you are watching this on the YouTube, all of the links that are sent in chat or uh, mentioned or shown on the screen will also be in the description. Lost my train of thought for a second there. Woo, thank you so much for the bits, Biangle. Much, much, much appreciated. Oh, hell yeah, with the fucking rainbow flag and all that. Happy to see me. Well, thanks so much. I'm happy to see y'all again, too. I miss you all. School is a nightmare. What else is new? <laughs> so, it'd be nice to chill for a little bit before I have to get back to doing a project that was supposed to be a term-long project that I haven't done very much on, and now it's due in two weeks. Week and a half? Week and a half. Hmm. Yeah. Anyway... <laughs> Anyhow... Uh, I got it. what am I doing? Okay, <laughs> let's get the text off the screen. And start with... Community news. Oh, that was your college career. Yeah, I... I actually, I did better in university because I had more control over my courses, but that's like... The course I'm taking right now is not, like, it's one with a strict set of courses in a specific cohort that everyone goes through the same things together um so I don't have as much control over my own schedule and workload and it has not been kind to me but it's fine captions are on and with that let's see what what the fuck is this um so this appears to be Hussie's latest uh side project Par parody side project um troubled cosmos that is, it looks like a lot of community news but it's smaller than it appears um is this the yeah it is so this is i mean we can scroll through this pretty quickly so it, it, it essentially this appears to be he's making a mockery of the whole nft hot mess and like copyright in general <laughs> his latest prank ah uh, yes one could even say that it is pranksis am i using that word correctly i don't know he hasn't given a strict definition in the story um <laughs> <laughs> ah, Aleph, thank you for backing me up. Okay, I am more confident now that I am using that word correctly. Um, <laughs> Introducing Troubled Cosmos, a collection of 30 original characters dedicated to the public domain. Here they are. To the extent possible under law, Andrew Hussey has waived all copyright and related or neighboring rights to Troubled Cosmos, a collection of original characters dedicated to the public domain by Andrew Hussey. And they are all really color distorted <laughs> um jpeg artifacted images of star wars characters with the wrong names um and this was all published on march 16th <laughs> yeah sorry i should be reading the names on these yeah kyle Roin. oh i skipped one robert fight <laughs> dang it i keep Garfield Monday fucker. <laughs> Rum Rumpty Dumpty. Nervous Arnold. Mike Luke Walker. Unpopular creature. <laughs> Crispy Star Wars indeed. Robert Fight is your favorite. Mm -hmm. Sh Showtime Flanagan. Mean Father. <laughs> <laughs> Lewis shit can. <laughs> Hank Soldier. Choo choo choo. <laughs> like, God. Oh, we're not even halfway through. Blake Sand Hater. Mayor Mischief. <laughs> <laughs> S 
swampy. <laughs> Lambo Calzone. <laughs> Jabroni Hutchinson. <laughs> uh, tag tag yourself. Oh, that's a. I think I think I'm. What was what the fuck did they call Yoda again? I'm a swampy. I'm swampy. Um, <laughs> the man Delolian. <laughs> Greeny gun pointer. Secret granddaughter. <laughs> Omnibus Kablooey. <laughs> Cheeky roller. <laughs> Fip, but with an exclamation point. That's very important. <laughs> Elderly chair fan. <laughs> Expensive butler. Mr. Wind. We're almost done. Prius layover. Quigley Johnson. Rickety Grover. And Paddley Nortman. Ah, <sighs> infant swampy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Introducing the new friend, Fip. God. So, if we scroll down to the bottom, there's one final message. Buy unofficial merchandise here. No merchandise is official because we all own these OCs. <laughs> Since these public domain OCs belong to the world, it's everyone's right to profit from them. You are free to sell merchandise or commercially exploit this property in any manner you wish. Download high resolution assets here. And it's a link to a Google Drive. A final note of caution. Do not attempt to put these OCs on a blockchain. The digital artifacts are too complex and your computer farm will catch on fire. This will be devastating to the environment as well as your bottom line. Just sell merch instead. It is your right. <laughs> yes, our original characters. This whole, like... Just jumping back because I forgot to paste these docu uh, links into the document for the YouTube. But, um... So, that's... Uh... Hussie's Pranks' side project while Psycholonials is being serially released, I guess? <laughs> Yeah, throw, absolutely throwing shade at NFTs, because fuck that shit. Um, it is absolutely monstrous for the environment. I love the idea that the digital JPEG artifacts are too complex and will set the farm on the computer farm on fire. <laughs> but it does not end there. So... Uh, three days later. Incredible news. Due to high demand and conditions of artificial scarcity, the price of Troubled Cosmos merch has been skyrocketing. Marked up now at 200%. Buying now will make these shirts a great investment as the price continues to soar. Which I can't help but also feel like is <laughs> maybe trying to poke at um, the whole um, game GameStop stocks fiasco. And as you can see, here they all are, listed on Redbubble. Um, <laughs> which one would you like to see? Um, I'm, I'm allowing my, my brother to pick which one we look at. <laughs> you, this gives you a nice running scroll of all of them on the same page as we scroll up as well. Um, yeah, too much negative grist. Yeah. On the nose, indeed. Bip! <laughs> so if we scroll down to the products, the prices are all in the thousands. <laughs> like two thousand fucking dollars for a pullover. <laughs> and it goes, wow! And then it just continues to soar from 200% to 420% up to 1,069% because we had to get a 69 joke in there somewhere. Um, absolutely insane. This wouldn't be possible without the passion of troubled Cosmos merch investors. To together, we will take the price of these shirts to the moon. We get 5,000%. What the fuck? 
kind of is that oh my god it's fucking bitcoins with <laughs> deep fried what they fucking call them un unliked character unliked creature or something Yes, I know these seem like steep prices to pay for red bubble shirts, but think of it this way. A year from now, you will be sitting in your mansion and bragging to your friends that you were able to buy them for so cheap. <laughs> so, actually, the pre the pullover hoodie, price comparison. Pullover hoodie has now gained another $1,000 in cost. <laughs> um... Yeah... As, as we can, <laughs> it keeps fucking going. So essentially, we now have deluxe versions that came out four days after the originals. After sleepless nights and countless timings, we've established a collection of designer apparel based on the Trouble Cosmos original characters. And they're just the same images, but with the word deluxe over them and this also very JPEG artifacted <laughs> clip art of a guy teeing off to play golf. <laughs> I'll just, uh, give you a little flash. Because, like, the original images... Like, they didn't... I think they might have artifacted them a little more, even, maybe. But it's mostly the same thing with this clip art image of a person golfing. Has it using bots to link the sales prices to make them soar automatically? I don't know, maybe. Oh, an LR arrow through the tweets? Oops. Well, we're almost done now. I will use that on the next one, I guess. Um, based on the appraised value and current market trends, starting uh, markup for these deluxe shirts is a thousand percent can be and can be purchased here. So that looks like... I actually haven't looked at this um, in particular quite yet. Um, oh, wait. Troubled Cosmos 2... This is an entirely separate Twitter account. Hold up. I think that's the only tweets on here. I'm just gonna turn notifications on just in case there's more. But, uh... Oh, so the deluxe items appear to be actually less expensive than the originals at present. Um, did I, oh, I forgot to link the original Redbubble. Let me reopen that. Um, so, that's, that's, um, no, we're looking at that hot mess later. Anyway. I'm just like trying to oh my god um he is showing off wearing his own merch uh yep you know what I love the fact that he is just living his fucking life wearing an unpopular creature t-shirt and swampy leggings there's a second image somewhere, supposedly can't, um, actually if I go back, that's not what I wanted to go back to, don't look at my Twitter feed. Um, anyway, this is Ryan North wearing a, a Hank, what was it, fucking Hank Flanagan or whatever t-shirt. Um, Ryan North, who apparently, uh, has, uh, taken the route of just not even trying to do a home haircut throughout quarantine. <laughs> Um, good on him. Has he been GNC as fuck? <laughs> or G G and F? Oh wait, I'm gonna assume you meant GNC, but yes. Um, anyway, that's like, you know, that's a thing. I don't know what else there is to say about that. God's fucking speed to anyone willing to spend two thousand dollars for a goddamn pullover. Having gotten your own designs off of 
Redbubble yourself. Hussy totally would have had to place the order for those items in a way delivery. <laughs> yes. He didn't get the Mandalorian boots? Ugh, shame. He's certainly wearing fucking something here. Um, if anyone here is uh, into Hunter x Hunter, uh, if you are also into the ICP, boy, do I have some exciting news for you. Here's uh, Gon and Kahlua with... Um, Oh my god, why can't I remember the second one's name? All I can remember is Shaggy Too Dope. What the fuck is the other guy's name? Violent J. Got it. Yeah. So, this is the latest thing that he's done. We'll just do a quick little... This is what he's up... This is what he's been up to. That's, uh... Yeah, I like that face mask, I gotta say. With the roses on it and shit. Very nice. Um, he is eating a fire hose. And now he is holding an exit sign. Oh, it is, yeah. This is probably the clearest image of the shirt. You like the, the diamond leggings? Yeah. And then uh, that's the end of this adventure. And that's community news. Uh, community news this week ended up being um, Hussy has just, he's doing whatever the fuck he wants and good for him. <laughs> and now, Psycholonials, which is what you all came here for. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what else to add to that. But, like, he's living it up. Good shit. This chapter? Oh, yeah. So this chapter... I'm... Yeah, I'm interested to get through it. Um, so I found it, um, was a little, why is the game not responding? Please and thank you. Um, there it goes. But, um, So as you can see in the logo, we have some uh, colorful faces joining the cast. Has these serving looks? Honestly, yeah. But, uh... Yeah, we meet some uh, interesting folks, but not the one in the center. I mean, like, it is quite an she's got quite an excellent look we will definitely meet her the lower left oh which one is that yeah yeah, yeah whatever oh yes this fellow but yes uh we'll be introduced to a whole cohort and for now Let's see who... We still don't know who the fuck this is. Oh, sure are gonna have a conversation. Interlude 3. And as a friendly reminder, this is where we left off. A shitload of blood sh uh, bloodshed and uh, a whole lot of dead cops. A faked biochemical attack. Which... I think I figured out why that bothered me so much. Lying just really fucking stresses me out. And that was such a huge fucking lie. And I was like, oh my god, this is so fucking fucked. It's just... It's very stressful. <laughs> I hate lying so much. Um, dog scratch. 
Hmm. This isn't proper enough for him. Jesus fucking Christ. Well, sorry, that was kind of unprofessional of me. I'm still just taking a moment to process whatever the fuck it was I just saw you do. I know you are capable of many feats when your back is against the wall, but somehow you managed to surprise even me this time. Bravo. But we should make it absolutely clear what's going on here now, okay? There's no going back now. Not ever. If there's a picture on the Wikipedia page showing what it means to have just passed the point of no return, we're gonna need to replace it with that panel up there. You lie in bloody, unconscious, disease-stricken next to a dead, loyal simp surrounded by several dozen slaughtered cops after just having captured an island once belonging to the United States of America. Oh, you mean like Abby states <laughs> shares my stress? Yeah. Really great work, actually. I fucking love it. You know why? Because the higher the stakes get, the more potent your choices become. The more power choice itself starts to accumulate. So why don't we try this again? Maybe, just maybe, you've got what it takes to break through this time. You could pull your shit together. Rely on the hospitality of, rely on the hospitality of your friends and allies. Let them nurse you back to health. Keep your powder dry for the war ahead, and let there be no mistaking it. There will be war. Or you could just roll over and fucking die already, LMAO. So which one of these compelling options strikes your fancy, huh? Recover your health or succumb to your wounds. We don't get a choice. Not yet, anyway. R.I.P. Percy. Oh, yeah, fuck, poor fun kid. <laughs> you would just simply intervene. <laughs> Come on, don't act so surprised. You knew this was coming. Do I even need to say it anymore? Meaningful choices can only be unlocked by a true successor. And you sure don't look like a successor to me yet. Not while you're lying on the floor all sick and bloody and sleeping like that. Um, you sorta of need to be awake to make choices? It's a critical precondition to the entire idea, dummy. I just wanted to stop by and remind you you're making great progress here. Really like what I've been seeing. Keep it up. Here's an idea. Why don't we cut the bullshit and just make a date? I'll meet you back here in a couple chapters and we can do the same charade all over again. Sound cool? Just one more time, though, I promise. After that, your true test will come. You gotta trust me. Shit like this just takes a lot of patience. And if there's one thing I'll never run out of again, it's time. There's one thing I'll, I'll never run out of again, it's time. So who the fuck? Sleep well, Jen. It's not, it's not riotous. I think there's a possibility it's her dad. Yes, the pract chapter six, the practice of delegation and the sword of Damocles is lowering and lowering. Well, I did notice it does not hit any lower than it did in the intro to chapter five. Yeah, that hit you like a truck when you first read it. There will be war. Yeah, Z got shot in uh, in the leg. Yeah, the again. The next day. And we're back with this bop. Evacuation of the island was chaotic but swift. Terrified locals stormed the docks, pushing each other closer and closer to the water, but mindful not to tip each other in. They're polite people. Decent enough, you always thought. None terribly deserving of being forced to become a prisoner to a seceding summer colony, which is why you went to so much trouble to orchestrate a well-oiled evacuation machine. All told, the vast majority of the evacuation only took a few hours. By the time the sun was setting and the boats were returning from their round trips, only a handful of people still waited on the piers. And when boats came back from their drop-offs, many of the waiting locals were a little puzzled to find that the boats weren't returning empty. They were always filled with new groups of well-armed people, jumping onto the docks with gusto and scattering into the neighborhoods and disappearing. 
not running away from the danger, but right into it. With every boat full of locals dropped off at, a mass at the Massachusetts shore, your people always had another squad of recruits from the mainland ready to jump on board and head to the island. It continued on like this for hours back and forth across the sound. Where the population at the beginning of the day was around 10,000, the final headcount after a near total evacuation was 13,000. Your false flag maneuver simply replaced the entire population of the island with rabid jubilites and then some. The new recruits remained faithful that the crisis posed no danger to them and was merely a powerful act of princess. And they would keep coming well after the evacuation too. There was no need to bother with the pretense of renting Airbnbs anymore or keeping a low profile. The new residents of the island began occupying the houses vacated by locals, along with the large supply of empty summer homes. No form of authority existed to stop you anymore. Collectively, all of you are the authority. The only thing left to do is wait and see how this authority will be challenged by the government once it comes to grips with how badly it just got bamboozled. But in the meantime, not even your most cynical aunties can dispute the obvious. This island now belongs to you. Does that make the equius? Is Gamzee a cop? No. Uh, don't agree with the specifics, but loving the energy? I mean, yeah, fair, fair statement. Um, so the island, yeah, the island is theirs. All of the locals have disappeared. Um, supposedly, I don't know, there might still be people hiding in their basements or some shit. Um, but the island is, uh, pretty much jubilate run at the moment. And we can see there's some folks evacuating from a large white van in front of Abby's house. Unfortunately, it will be some time before you're healthy enough to appreciate your conquest, let alone conscious enough. Your dear friend Abby now struggles to manage the aftermath of your bold decisions. Cause Z is fucking out. Out. Out, out, out. Didn't consider basement hiders? Well, yeah, it's like you could evacuate the island or you could wait for the thr- or you could like hide in your fucking basement like it's a bunker to wait for the threat to clear. That is also an option. Um But yeah, I think with a pop with a with a prior population of 10,000, I I can't realistically see every single last person evacuating. There must be stragglers who stuck to their homes. <laughs> Which people do love their bunkers. <laughs> mm -hmm. But yeah, here's another thing that I'm thinking about with them talking about. Um, first of all, the massive push together crowds at the docks, and second of all, the crowds of people coming back in on the boats, and this bringing all of these new people to the island. Such a massive turnover. Z as we know, is fucking sick with COVID, so it clearly existed on the island before, and they, they hardly had any outside contact and still managed to contract it. So, the implication would be, I don't know, I'm just like, we're still in COVID times in this here story, and they just brought a fuckload of fresh bodies onto this island, and I'm just like, waiting for the other shoe to drop, um, in that regard. New people and all crowded together. Exactly! And at least, uh, not- spoiler, not spoiler, um, in all of the scenes that we see, fucking nobody is wearing masks, um, for any of these meetings. It's a lot of talking in this chapter. It's a little bit of a break from gunfire. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it's a lot. So yeah, I'm just you know gonna be waiting for the other shoe to drop on that one.
Z, I don't know if you can hear me. You have to get better soon, okay? If you didn't make it, I'd be so lost. I don't think I could even go on. People are already looking to me for answers, but I don't have the slightest idea how to handle this situation. The news is going insane about it. And my parents are losing it. I don't know what to tell them. I'm just ignoring them for now until I know what your plan is. I don't even know how... How we're... How are you going to follow this up? I doubt people will believe the bio attack was real forever. There are already a lot of questions about it. What happens next? What if all the people try to come back and like send the military this time? Mostly just, I'm so worried about you. Please don't leave me. I'd be so devastated. Okay, I'll be back to check on you soon. Your clown ring is waiting is downstairs waiting for orders. I guess I'll tell them something. <laughs> I don't know what yet. To protect the island, I guess. I have no idea what else there is even to do at this point. <sighs> Feel better. Even no love for it, guess. Ugh. Oh, Abby. You clown up before you address Z's inner circle. Ring three, as you've heard them referred to before. You've never interacted with any of these people at all, and you don't know what to say to them. That surprised me. Um when I first read this chapter, I found this surprising because I was always under the impression that Abby and Percy were both a part of Ring 3 as as these closest confidants. But it appears not. Um, it appears Abby was not involved in any of that part at all. But wearing the paint seems like the right thing to do, for the sake of appearances. They will be looking- they will be looking to you for leadership now. And meet Ring 3. What a crowd! <laughs> so you can see the rainbow colorful one that everyone was excited about from the thumbnail, as well as... Uh, um, I don't know if you can see my mouse. The one to the left of Abby with the pink hair. The one from the trailer that a number of folks have been very excited about. Ring three is probably just a three three ring circus. Mm-hmm. I don't know the strict definition for a three ring circus. <laughs> um, but yeah, I feel like that's a very likely reference. Um But, um, yeah, so these fellows, they, I noticed as well in the last chapter there was one in image, um, that was, um, I'm losing my train of thought, there was, a, um, one of the images when they were showing a bunch of the clowns in action. Um, the one where they were all silhouetted out, and we kind of recognized, oh, the pink haired one, that's the one from the trailer, it's silhouetted there. That is all of these fellows. If you look back at that panel now, you can see it's, it is ring three, that's what that image is. It was foreshadowing their, uh, presence. Um. <laughs> yeah, one does look like a hussy outfit. Um. There, yeah, one of them's got a fucking yaoi paddle. Um, but yeah, well, one of them gets a name in this chapter, the rest of them don't. Once they're kind of properly introduced, then I'll, then we'll go back into the, um, character screen. Cast list, thank you. Yeah, that's what it's called. Uh, 
Hi, everybody. Um, I guess none of you have ever heard from me directly before, have you? Well, I'm Apple Pie, as I'm sure you know, but you can just call me Abby. I just made my clown name for fun. It was never supposed to be a serious code name or anything. Oh yeah, there's so many great names that just, like, really deserve a spotlight. This fucking man and his naming conventions. Yeah, <laughs> Abby's going on and they're looking at each other like, Hello, what's going on? <laughs> Z is obviously wounded and very sick, so I need to make sure everything is running smoothly while she recovers. Which means... well, I'm still not sure what that means. Sorry, I didn't expect having to do this, and I don't really have a plan yet. Yeah, and she's like, may I? <laughs> But what we do know is yesterday Z, yesterday, Z cleared out the entire population of the island with a really crazy stunt. And we don't know how long that can last before the authorities catch on to the, uh, prank? So, I think we all need to prepare- Um... Oh, let me try that one again. So, I think we all need to prepare to keep the island safe from that happening. Which means having all your people? Like, you're meant the many- ugh. Wow, I can fucking read today. <laughs> Which means having all your people? Like the many Jubilites under your command. <sighs> I'm actually not sure how it works. There is, like, a hierarchy, right? Like, you all give orders to subdivisions of clowns and such? So you need to make sure they're all set up to defend against whatever it might be. An invasion from the government? Also, I think I need to keep the oh, I think we need to keep the messaging up, just to make sure that everyone on the mainland knows it's not safe to try to come back. Whether that means keeping up the rules of yesterday's attack, or maybe something else. Anything to deter people from wanting to come back. Because I think we've gone way too far to go back to normal, right? This seems really messy, and we just have to make the best of it. I'm sorry. I'm really overwhelmed by all this. You deserve better leadership than my incoherent babbling. I'm doing my best. <clears throat> Joculine now is is now introduced. <gasps> Oh my god, a fucking ubus, of course. Also, Joculine's fucking theme song? The whimsicality? Excellent. Excellent stuff. Oh, actually, let me do. Mm. Um. I just realized I heard someone say something about the song titles for this album. Um, I'm opening the wrong browsers. That's fine. Okay. Whew. So we. <laughs> uh, Okay, I gotta ooh this one, let's fucking go. Folks, may I just say what an absolute honor it is to be serving you Sequitewi apple pie. Sequitewi? Yes, that is your formal wank within our organization. You are the Sequitewi of Jape. I assure you we have nothing but the utmost sympathy for the difficult position you are in. Everyone here was fully aware of the role you traditionally play within the Jupe White movement. You all... How shall I say, more of an inspirational figure? A hands-off secretary who remains uninvolved with the tedium of daily operations. That's our role, and we are all beyond thrilled to be playing it. So I completely understand if you find yourself in an awkward position. <laughs> I see. Yes, thank you for understanding, um... Jockeyween. 
it's my Quansona name. <laughs> we all go by our Quansonas in this organization. No human names allowed as a matter of as a matter of policy. It's strictly for security reasons, you understand. But we will all be more than, but we will all be more than pleased to refer to you as Secretary Abby as a special exception, if that is your wish. Oh, yeah, thank you. Or just Abby is also fine, lol. <laughs> you got it, Abby. It is so great to finally be speaking with you. Can I just say what an admirer of yours I have always been? Long before the rise of Supreme Hawk of XZ. Supreme Honk Effects? Of course. <laughs> it is quite the title, isn't it? But look at all that she has accomplished. It was, it had, blah, blah. fuck. It has been a remarkable achievement, and I have absolute certainty that there was not a single Jubilite on this island who would not die for our Weedle. <laughs> uh. Um. Yes, the roller skates are excellent. But yeah, security reasons. Mm hmm. Pope Z. God, yeah. Yeah, Joculeen is like a very intense character. <laughs> love the look, though. Do love the look. Um. Okay. <laughs> I think is that good for Ubu's? I feel like that's good for Ubu's. That's that was a lot of a lot of dialogue there. Reddit kind of ass. Yikes. Well, okay, that's nice to hear, I guess. But I don't think we need anyone to die for anybody just yet. I think we just need to figure out how to get this crazy situation under control. Naturally, Secretary or Abby, I mean. You may not favor the spotlight, but it is this clown's humble opinion that your management instincts are every bit as sharp as our Supreme Honk effects But may I make a modest recommendation? Sure. If you find yourself overwhelmed by the tactical situation, I would strongly advise you to consider the practice of delegation. In fact, I would be happy to personally take the reins on implementing all follow-up strategies which are necessary to secure our territory and keep our adversaries at bay. Just give the order and I'll take care of everything. Oh, you would? Wow, that actually does sound very helpful. Thank you, Draculine. Didn't realize how tall they were until seeing the that one other image. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it will be my pleasure to serve you and the Supreme Honk effects now and always. Okay, so can you start with all that, like, right now? I have some other things I need to do. Like feed my poor horse. Oh, he's probably been so worried since I had to leave suddenly the since I had to leave suddenly the other day. Yes, by all means. I will have all essential operations put into motion immediately. By the end of the day, you will see. There is nothing to worry about at all. Now go feed your beautiful horse. All Jubilites consider the health and well-being of Archbishop David Hasselhoof to be of paramount concern to our mission. <laughs> Archbishop David Hasselhoof, the horse. <laughs> oh, stretch and hydrate. Both good ideas. Raise my arms up. And take a sip. Because that is a lot of dialogue. A lot of very enthusiastic dialogue. Okay. Is this clown Catholicism? <laughs> Um, maybe, well, well, uh, there's actually some, uh, reflection on imperialism and spreading in doctrine later on in this chapter that, uh, gives a different lens to look at jubilatism through. 
<laughs> Pass the woof doesn't survive, we riot. <laughs> oh, right. Clown church. Oh, God. Yeah. No, th th I mean, this is not al uh, an analog for Alternian troll clown church. That much I am fairly confident about. <laughs> You gave my horse a rank? <laughs> it's not a j it's a joke, of course. No, we did not. <laughs> but we do like to joke around us clowns, don't we? Oh, lol. Yeah, that was actually pretty funny. Okay, I'll go do that then. Thanks again for the help. Exit Abby. And you can see Joculine starting to uh, rally everyone together behind poor Abby, who is going through a lot right now. <laughs> Earthsea, Earthsea Clown Church and Alternian Clown Church are very different. Yeah, Earthsea Clown Church is not... Um... Yeah, they are not the same. Earthsea Clown Church has a very odd... It's Gamzee's invention? On candy, anyway? Gamzee's Clown Church invention? Uh... I'm losing my train of thought. It's all good. Abby. <laughs> Abby, Abby, Abby. You walk away feeling relieved of administrative responsibility, only to realize you now have time to dwell on all your other problems. You are terrified that your friend won't recover from her critical condition. And no matter how successful her subordinates are, you doubt you'll ever be able to shake the feeling that this island can be invaded by the military at any moment. Your parents are pissed, not only at your involvement in the secession of their favorite summer colony, but they now realize that they've been played as well. Your mother has caught on to the fact that she was being scammed by her lover, and your father seems to understand you've been playing him for the fool as well. They want their money back, but obviously that's not going to happen. You'll have to think about how to play it. You don't think your mom knows she was being catfished by Z and Percy. Maybe you can try to convince your dad that you were sincere about the Bitcoin stuff, but you were being scammed by the same guy that your mom was. That seems like a plausible out, but that would just involve more lying, and maybe it's not even worth it anymore. You used... And end distraction for yourself. <laughs> I mean, yeah, if you have the points and it's necessary. Yep. <sighs> Maybe Z was right, and you're better off just giving up on the idea that parents like this are worth having any relationship with at all. You take another look at the news. It's pure madness. You and Z are everywhere you look when it comes to trending topics online and coverage of recent events. The upheaval around the country is the upheaval around the country is accelerating, and all the footage you can find now features way, way too many clowns in the gatherings for your comfort. No matter which media outlet you turn to, it always seems they'd rather point their cameras at a bunch of unruly clowns than focus on the real issues originally propelling the civil unrest. And yet, it's hard to deny that the gradually coalescing rhetorical message of this clown ruckus ties into Z's political agenda, which she so assiduously itemized in her manifesto. This movement, which once seemed nothing more than a bunch of anarchist jesters opportunistically making mischief, now more closely represents open revolt against capitalist and imperialist state power. More police stations are falling and small pockets of territory are being captured by jubilites, but nobody knows where this is going or what the vision is or what the vision is for the direction of the movement without the guidance of their supreme honk effects, otherwise known as your best friend. You 
need Z. Well, this is how they're doing right now. Um, has he the atrocious sense of scale for the horse? I Yeah, I guess that was kind of small for a horse. Size is just a suggestion. Hey, maybe it's a breed of horse that just happens to be that size? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, ponies exist. Small horses are a thing. Maybe not that size and scale? I don't fucking know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're fine. This can only go well. <laughs> Ooh, boy. And... Oh! We are in the dream realm with the dream self. Or astral projecting, another way of uh, wording it. Taking a wander down this mountain. And I believe this was the only image on the Steam page that we had yet to see in the actual story context. Now sharply aware of horse size, it's struck with fear. <laughs> yeah, horses yeah, are can be very fucking big. Oh yeah, it could be literal astral projecting if this is actually a real alien planet. If. Your buddy Eric is okay. <laughs> I'm dreaming again. Don't wake me up this time. I want some answers. I have no power to wake you up. The sickness inside you keeps you asleep. What do you want to know? Last time I dreamed of you, you said I was doing well, but doing well at what? Shouldn't you answer that? What is it you believe you're actually doing? I don't know. A lot of shit. Fighting for survival? And you're still alive, are you not? I guess. Then you are doing well. This is some cagey bullshit. I think you know there's a lot more going on here than just surviving. You're the one who gave me all those ideas, after all. Yes. So, why? What do you even want out of this? You mentioned survival. Perhaps this is my aim as well. Inevitably, as inevitably, we all die, of course. Even entire civilizations die. So doesn't it stand to reason that part of one's quest for survival is the propagation of everything one identifies with? And if a civilization is to survive beyond its time, doesn't it need to concern itself with such propagation methods as well? So you're saying, your society on Whimsify is dead, and this is your way of keeping it alive? Aside from the means of communicating my culture to you, what is so unusual about this? There are many nations on your planet which have engaged in similar practices, including the one you have begun to challenge. Practices like... Imperialism? Conquests can be achieved in so many ways. Often the most effective ways are when the conquered don't even fully grasp it that it's what's taking place. Does this ring true of the nation you were born in? I mean, if you're saying America does a lot of sketchy shit all over the world, but also has this, like, vast hegemonic influence over everything through culture and economics without even needing to invite, invade all, all, uh, without even needing to invade all the nations on Earth. Yeah, I know that. It's some kind of basic shit. The situation you described surely happens in many deliberate ways. But easily, just as much of it ha must happen automatically, yes? As a, logical and as a logical and effortless extension of the great power and influence your nation has. 
In other words, it is natural. It is only natural for a person or a civilization to instinctively seek out ways of propagating itself to assure its continued survival. How many ways has this happened on your planet that you already know of? Methods of colonization may involve sending ships across oceans to occupy foreign land. They may involve wars, cultural erasure, the displacement of large populations, or openly genocidal practices. But all instances of these events on your planet have resulted from the invasion of one continent by another. Is it not also conceivable that your planet could be subject to the same forces from beyond your solar system? I don't mean to alarm you by raising the possibility. The truth is, Earth has nothing to worry about when it comes to the threat of a hostile interstellar invasion. There is no planet in the galaxy that needs to worry about that, because it's impossible. It is? Yes, space travel is too difficult. The speed of light cannot be exceeded or even safely approached. Our planets are locked apart from each other forever until they all grow cold and die. So, it sounds like you're saying, if one planet wants to conquer another, they need to use a different method than just sending a bunch of spaceships over and shooting lasers at everybody. Yes, that is true. So are you saying that's what you're doing here? I am only saying this. Of all that is about to take place on your planet, there is only one person who is responsible for the actions that will bring about these changes. And that person is you. Wait, don't go! WAIT! And... They are... Back to reality. <sighs> Teleportation and quantum tunneling. But yeah. So now it's like, okay, so is that what's happening here? Because we've talked, we've had some discussions around here before, back and forth, you know, wondering, is riotous really something that's being created by these unconscious? Is he actually receiving messages from riotous of Whimsify? Like... This is not... Metric, paper, and everything in the universe. Yes, I will take a closer look at that later. But, um... <laughs> right, the nosebleed does usually imply psychic shenanigans. For whatever reason, the nosebleed is just the media-determined way to show this. Um... But, uh, thought, yeah, thoughts aren't limited by the rules of time and space. By Z, it was simply go to riotous. Mm -hmm. How delusions can seem so real and internally logical. Um. But, yeah, I mean, that's... Do we know? I mean, this is a fictional story. Theoretically, she could actually be receiving messages from a fucking space god. Oh, dear. Every time there's either something about Z's parents or something about Rises, we get this face, this like, oh dear god face. Two weeks later, they got the Jubilite flag flying high. Mr. Robot, but with clowns instead of hackers. Hmm. Yeah, I guess I guess I'm not familiar with that show, but interesting comparison. Um. 
Oh, the one where heaven is like a technological paradise? Are you talking about uh, an episode of Black Mirror? I've seen very few episodes of Black Mirror. Um, but I have seen the one where they plug into the afterlife and are inside of a computer in Young Forever. Because that's the gay one, so I... You know, at the time, partner a number of years ago was like... To watch the gay one, I was like, okay. <laughs> there we are. What a look. What is the logo that Abby is wearing? Is that made up or not? Because I'm not sure. Andrew DePero, that was the episode, yeah. After a couple weeks in bed, you man you managed to beat the virus. You feel weak, and you still can't put any weight on your wounded leg, but you finally feel well enough to leave Abby's house and get back in the action. Oh, it's 12.04. You know what, actually, I'm gonna... <laughs> this is a good place to take a break. <sighs> so, that's your setup. He's getting back in the action. We're gonna take five, rest my voice, have some water. Um, implied horsewoman gender, <laughs> maybe? I mean, yeah, it definitely has the, like, I can definitely see the reference to the Venus symbol. But there's that line going through the middle of the circle, right? Connecting the two. But yes, food for thought. Um, I'm gonna take five. And then we'll be back to see um, what's been going on in the last two weeks. We'll get a status update. Hello. Welcome. I... I forgot to set the timer. Well, I set the timer and then I forgot to turn it on, but like it's been like five and a half minutes maybe, so it's fine. Um, <laughs> clown, clown gender horse girl, fuck it. Fuck yeah. Um, ah, undone was the show you were thinking of. Um, the obligatory day, I suppose. Um, we as the audience are just as unsure as Z is whether these are aliens or just inside Z's head because the fictional context makes aliens genuinely plausible to us. Yeah. Um. Land of Whimsy and Knowles. That's what you're calling until convinced otherwise. Yeah, that is nice. Um. Your 20-year-old Alma nearly dies in a car accident. She finds that she has a new relationship with time. She develops a newfound relationship to find out the truth about her father's death. Hmm. Would be surprised if it was influential. Interesting. Interesting, interesting. Well, let's continue exploring. Let me get the text off the screen. I misclicked and I took the Twitch chat off. Oops. <laughs> that, it's still there. Once people start sending messages again, they'll still pop up. I just, it just refreshes when I close it. Yeah, there's a message on the screen. Whoops. Well, the text is off the screen anyway. I'm going to turn the sound back on. Because that's important. Okay, so, beginning again. After a couple weeks in bed, you manage to beat the virus. You feel weak, and you still can't put any weight on your wounded leg, but you finally feel well enough to leave Abby's house and get back to the action. Speaking of action, even though you could hardly post any content due to being sick, your brand continued its relentless march forward. You now have 1,125... posts? Ah. Oh. Should have been 1025. Um, 38 million followers and one following, which would be following Abby. But 
Yes. Um, the evacuation stunt, now widely regarded as a maneuver you orchestrated for the purposes of seizing full possession of the island, grabbed the world's undivided attention as the flashpoint for a credible resistance movement against the United States government. The ensuing media frenzy and global political discourse has only served to ratchet up your follower count pre precipitously. If you were in better health, you would have been able to appreciate the out appreciate your outrageously snowballing fame a lot more, but as it was, you could barely manage to lift your phone most days. Today, you are just happy to be able to get out for some fresh air. It's your first in-person debriefing with Ring 3 since you've been sick. Or ever, for that matter. All previous meetings were done online while you were all keeping a low profile, but now that you control the island absolutely, there's little need for such discretion. What shirt? Oh god, is that about that fucking... They made up a flag. Oh. Oh, that's a, that sure is a clown nurse on Adventure Time. Okay, well, what nightmares are made out of this? Yeah, um, yeah, what fucking episode is that? Jesus Christ. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> scary clown warning. Yeah, the clown- yeah, the clown nurses from Adventure Time. That is a lot. Uh, Adventure Time Progress. Finished season two, starting season three. Next time I sit down to watch. They're, I'm excited because they're, you know, end of season two is when they're just starting to pull in, um, all of the little world building pieces and pull together all the little world building pieces that they planted throughout the first two seasons. Good shit. Ring 3, under the delegated supervision of Joculine, recently reallocate, re reallocated to a nearby country club for meeting purposes. I feel like he meant to just use the word relocated rather than reallocated. Because reallocate would be like Ab Ab Abby and delegating jo the stuff to the responsibilities to Joculine was reallocating those responsibilities. Um, like a physical picking and I don't know. That wording hit me weird and I'm picky. <laughs> You're more than a little anxious to learn what your organization has been up to while you've been in recovery. Okay, last time and then I'll stop talking about this. I feel like the wording feels weird to me because reallocated is generally used for like physical objects and assets. Um, and or like responsibilities rather than like human beings. Anyway, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. <laughs> In they go. And there's everybody! They're all fucking <laughs> crying as they salute. all this. I'm getting the full 12 clan salute, huh? Well, I'm flattered, but at ease, bitches. <laughs> I'm alive and long past due for a property briefing. Abby's been keeping me updated on stuff while nursing me back to health. But now that I'm on my feet again, I think it's time to get serious about our full tactical situation and what comes next. Abs, you want to lead the meeting and take it from the top? 
Well, me? Sure, you're the secretary of Jape after all. <laughs> so I've been told. Okay, here's what's been going on since the evacuation. Um, whew, it's been so fucking much. Let's see. Well, there was the power outage scare, which lasted, what, a day or two? Then that got resolved somehow. And, Abby, this debriefing fucking sucks. Well, I'm sorry. I didn't even, I didn't even know we were, you were going to ask for one. I thought I could just chill here and listen to you guys. Uh, excuse me. Secretary Abby, it's perfectly all right with us if you relax there and listen, and with all due respect from reverence to our supreme honk effect Z. First of all, may I say what an honor it is to finally be addressing you in person, and how relieved we all are to see you recovered. Yeah, sure. What are you trying to say here? You're, a uh, Jocelyn, right? Yes! <gasps> wow, you remembered my name? Oh my god, I'm so... <gasps> oh, I'm sorry, Supreme Honk Effects. I'm just... Please don't call me that. It sounds fucking ridiculous. Oh, yes, of course. My apologies, Z. I'm afraid I'm losing my composure due to my feelings of admiration for what you have accomplished here and... Cool. We all accomplished this, though. So, what's up, Joculeen? Are you trying to volunteer to give me a debriefing instead of Abby? Y yes if that's okay, sir. Don't call me sir either, but yeah, it's okay. Whenever you're ready. As Secretary Abby has already touched upon, your evacuation strategy has been an overwhelming success. Virtually all locals have been displaced from the island due to your brilliant and daring act of pranksis, and have been replaced with tens of thousands of Jubilite loyalists. Cool. We- oh, they're backwards instead of forwards, there we go. While the media debated whether or not it was a hoax, we made sure to secure the island. We've taken over all major facilities with a militia presence, including the airport. We've also promoted the claim that there are now thousands of bombs deployed all over the island, rigged to detonate if the government ever reclaims this territory. So they're free to, so they're free to try if they like, but the consequence will simply be the total obliteration of all this valuable property they claim we have stolen. They are claiming we have stolen. Yeah, I heard about the bombs. They hit that part of the story a lot in the media. It was a nice touch. Thank you, sir. I mean, Z. It was my idea. <laughs> but there aren't any actual bombs, are there? Oh, there are... Oh, there are a bunch of real bombs for sure. For the sake of taking photographs to prove it isn't completely made up, as well as for detonating a few of them as a warning, if it ever comes to that. But yes, you are right. There are far from thousands. Well, that's good to fucking know. <laughs> yes, and cheekishly, cheekily roller skating around the room now. Meanwhile, the U.S. military presence has been increasing. A fleet of Navy ships has amassed around the island, presumably to function as a blockade, preventing more ships from arriving. This has stemmed the flow of new recruits coming in, but more importantly, it's resulted in an unofficial embargo. Soon, we'll need to consider how to cope with supply shortages, unless we can figure out how to disrupt the blockade. Yeah, I've been thinking about that. I'm working on it. And the power situation? <gasps> right! As our secretary mentioned, we had that unfortunate power disruption. Electricity, as I'm sure you know, is not generated locally on, the, on this island. It is supplied from the mainland through two underwater cables, regrettably putting us at the mercy of whoever the energy company de of whatever the energy company decides to do, or worse, what federal authorities talk them into doing. So, as the textbook maneuver goes when it comes to any hostage crisis, which the feds are surely viewing this as, a beat on a much larger scale, they attempted to shut off the power. People on the island were understandably quite upset, so Secretary Abby kindly put out a distress call and the backlash by our fellow Jubilites was rather intense, to say the least. Many forms of pressure were put on the energy company until they relented and restored the power to the island. Pressure? Yeah, everything. You name it. 
threats, bribes, mass gatherings around their facilities and offices, they quickly realized it wasn't worth it to antagonize us like that, even if the feds were insisting on it. It may turn out, it turns out, our movement may have more leverage upon such institutions than even most government agencies do. Of course, the tremendous financial resources at our disposal make things like this go a lot easier. I really must commend you and Secretary Abby for accumulating so many assets with such a, with such a skillful Ill implementation of Princess. And they're looking at each other like, Excuse me, you were using what money? <laughs> um. See if you can find... Yeah, Joculine is missing clubs from her outfit entirely. She's got the spades and the hearts on her cheeks and the red jubilite diamonds on her ears. But no clubs. And yes, quite a distinct tattoo on her arm. I can't imagine anyone else in the movement having been as successful with the technique as you have. But then, <laughs> look who I'm talking to here. The inventor of Princess herself. Whoa, okay, let's slow down here. It's good you all got the power back on, that was important, obviously. But you say you're also spending money to make sh you're also spending money to make shit happen now? Yes, we have been. All with Secretary Abby's approval first, of course. I've also been re- I- <laughs> Did you really get her approval? I don't know. I have some doubts about that. I've also been significant- I have also been recommending a significant allocation of resources to a newly formed marketing wing of the Jubilite movement. I'm not sure if you've been tracking the metrics. Or what am I saying? You've been sick in bed, but you may want to take a look. Our following around the world has exploded since your phenomenal evacuation strategy, combined with my marketing methods. I did notice, actually. The numbers have really gone the numbers have really gone haywire, but I guess getting the word world ugh, but I guess getting worldwide attention for conquering an American summer colony will do that. And uh whatever shit you're doing with the marketing, I'm sure that's good too. How much have you been spending on it? Oh, many millions, but don't worry. According to Secretary Abby, it all represents a minuscule portion of the movement's total assets. Yeah, I thought it sounded okay. Okay, so she did actually have permission. I forgot that Abby actually chimes in. <laughs> we have so much now, and we've hardly done anything with it. What could it hurt? Yeah, this is all totally fine. Actually, it's very good. It transitions nicely into the next section of the manifesto. <gasps> it does?! I was gonna start distributing it after the, the evac stunt, but I got shot in the leg and then knocked on my ass by the Rona. So the advanced pranks this shit got delayed. But it really sounds like you got a head start on some of it without realizing it. So what is it actually? Well, once you get completely insane amounts of money from your marks, like we've got now, you just keep rolling that money over into new schemes. The money makes everything easier at that point. Doing stuff like you already just did solves- did doing stuff like you already just did to solve a power issue. You apply pressure. You can buy people off or use operatives on, on the mainland to twist people's arms into doing shit or even both at once. Mostly it- it- mostly this was meant to be a- uh, mostly this was meant to be applied to more financing schemes. For instance, we run through our trusty old political donor list, find some big names and target their- target their money guys, like their financial firms or whatever, and look for weak spots. Nerds who move the money around, buy and sell stock, whatever it is they do, and just apply pressure. Wave dollar figures in front of their faces that they aren't used to being paid and threaten them with consequences they're in no way equipped to handle. A few million in bribes here, here to pry loose a few billion in assets there, and you have a good return on investment. Oh! <laughs> yes! That makes so much sense. It's so exciting that I was unwittingly anticipating the next phase of our operation. Yeah, basically. It is the next logical step, isn't it? Abby's face through all of these panels is like... I mean, I feel like this whole time Abby's been feeling a bit of, oh god, what have I gotten myself into? And just the, you know... She's sticking by Z, but there's still that inner like... Wow, this is a lot! And that voice, uh... 
you know, that she or her being the mouthpiece for that view has uh, come up on has come up a number of times. Uh, yep, that's emoji is good. <laughs> that's a currency. <laughs> Whoa, not to me. I had no idea that's where this was going. It sounds really ambitious. So does taking over an island, doesn't it? Yeah, which... I mean, that's been pretty dangerous too. And now it sounds like you're pushing a campaign of, I guess, stealing from, from as many rich people and companies as possible? Yes. I'm not opposed to it. It's just my parents are one thing. I felt like, I don't know... Like that was some sort like that was sort of a fun game. But this are you sure we can handle all this? Secretary Abby, not to worry. Remember, that's what you have me for. It's perfectly alright if you didn't have the same natural foresight into advanced pranksis, which I did. Backhanded. I'm here to compliment your position of command, to expand more upon it, to make you even more effective. We all have our skills, don't we? Supreme Hawk of XZ, or oops, just Z, I mean. She is a great visionary, the glorious clown mother of all that we celebrate here on this island. Whereas I would like to see myself as a very skilled administrator. Someone who can handle all that boring stuff with money, logistics, planning, and whatnot. And you? You're good at... Hmm. Well, you... You have an incredible social media presence. Oh, and you're super pretty, and you have a beautiful horse. So see, we all have something to contribute. Each of us is like a puzzle piece that fits into the bigger picture. And if it pleases you, Z, I could simply carry on with what I've already been doing so effectively. It could o I could oversee these advanced pranks initiatives you were envisioning. Just say the word, and I will begin building teams to carry out your orders immediately. So, you want to be in charge of advanced pranks, huh? <laughs> hmm. Yeah, sensing maybe a little too much enthusiasm for taking on a position of massive power. Yeah, and they're both like, the fuck's going on here? Mm -hmm. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, bat the backhanded compliments to Abby, the, yeah, <laughs> five little Among Us guys, sus, 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 uh, pound the table, fuck it, yeah, why not, <gasps> oh, <laughs> I'll publish the chapter soon, but this material needs to stay internal for now. Can't be too public about it until we have a lot of plays in motion. Don't want to tip our hands too early. Get back to me tomorrow when you have a plan. We can talk about it more then. I gotta go home and lie down. My leg's still killing me. Abby, you ready? Abby, ready to go? And away they go. Oh my god, there's an ant on my keyboard. It's dead now. <laughs> uh, I looked over to press the fucking arrow key, and then I was like, Oh! What's that in the shadows? It appears that something might be moving. Welcome to spring, I guess. Our house gets a decent number of ants in spring. Anyway, now that's dealt with. Ants are harmless? They're harmless when they're outside. I am normally a major proponent of uh, trying to get a bug in a cup and put it outside rather than killing it, but my exceptions are ants, spiders, and centipedes. Because fuck all three of them. Get out of my house. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> 
Off we go. <laughs> yeah, that is a very satisfied look, shall we say. That's not all bugs. For example, sometimes a moth gets into the house. I don't kill moths. Like, I don't hate spiders. I just hate when they are big and scary. <laughs> uh, uh, there's just, there's a... Oh, we can see them on the right-hand side of the panel with David Hasselhoof sitting on the back deck. Um, I just am not a fan of these, like, thick-looking spiders that showed up in my room last summer, and I hadn't seen them before, and I really hope they don't show up again this year, because they look weird, and I couldn't identify them. They were, like, um... We normally just get, like, little daddy long legs, like, harmless things. But I don't know what the fuck this guy's deal was. It was really fucking fast. <laughs> oh, scorpions. Oh god, I can't even imagine like, scorpions as a part of a daily environment. <laughs> oh my god, you get lizards in your house sometimes? Oh. I'm gonna agree with you that it was cute. That, that's cute, just because you have. S I'm assuming you're saying that it's cute because they don't pose an act. I'm assuming they don't pose an act of harm then. <laughs> like Riska, fuck off. <laughs> oh, and distraction. That's it. Yeah, let's get back to the story. <laughs> Oh, snakes. I think I've had one or two garden snakes outside, but never in our house. Found a mouse in the bathroom only one time, and we were like, how do you get in here? And put it outside, and that was that. Anyway, end of action. It feels good to get back to our expensive wine dinners again. Just like old times. <laughs> old times, yeah. Shit's only been, what, two months? Christ. Yeah, Wow, feels like it's- I feel like fucking years have gone by. Are you sure you're good to be sitting out here like this? You can always go lie back down if you're not feeling well. Nah, I'm good. I need to, like, force myself to get back to normal. Things have held up pretty well, but TBH, the vibe of the scene has gotten pretty weird in my absence. Yeah... That new girl is, like, a lot. I'm trying to remember where she even came from. Didn't you appoint her to ring three? Yeah, I did, but she kind of quietly moved up the ladder after some positions got shuffled around, and I hardly remember hearing anything from her at all. She was mostly quiet and just, like, idle, waiting for instructions like most of the others. Now she's this chatty fucking Kathy all of a sudden. Well, she stepped up when you got sick, and I had no idea what to do. She's been a huge help, actually. It might have all fallen apart if it were only up to me. Not saying she isn't doing useful work. Of course, she wants to overachieve now that she's got the spotlight, and the stuff she's been doing will probably undeniably help the movement. Like, with the advanced pranks and shit, I wouldn't be surprised if she didn't go out and shake down a whole ton of money from a bunch of new suckers. I'm just saying my alarm bells are going off with her, and I'm not sure why yet. I just have a spider sense for these things. <laughs> Speaking of spiders. It's probably not good for your health to get too caught up in paranoia. I think she's most likely just a nice girl who got inspired by all the stuff you wrote. By all the stuff you wrote. And now she's trying really hard to impress you. That's all. I kind of relate to where she's coming from. Oh, so that explains our friendship, huh? You've just been trying to impress me with your sexy wiles and charms to end up second in command of my seditious clown empire? <laughs> Lol, yes, you figured out my master plan. I saw you in that restaurant waiting tables one time and was like, now there's a girl who's going to cause Nantucket Island to secede from the Union with a clown- with a clown-themed social media campaign. 
you sure know how to play the long game. Embedding, embedding yourself in it. In, as a high-ranking official in my impromptu paramilitary circus for years just for your shot at getting a lesbian kiss out of me would, that you've always been after. Elevail, stop! Uh, please don't mess with me like that. It's so mean. Well, I'm done trying to pull, put moves on you. I swear. I'm just trying to take care of you. You've been in ba such bad shape and got yourself in so much trouble. Well... We both got ourselves in trouble and need to take care of each other until we can, like, survive this. <laughs> I know. I'm just joking around. I'm always just joking. I'm not trying to be mean to you. I just joke around when I'm stressed about stuff. Um. Abby's really grown on you. Yeah, Abby's really grown on me, too. Um, definitely, as a character. Um, I feel like, as the the voice of reason, reason that occasionally says, Hey, aren't we getting in way too deep here at multiple points in the story? I feel like that's, uh, I feel that connection to Abby as the character who's like, Hey, what the fuck? <laughs> Every once in a while, you know? Ah, hey, Phoenix. Oh, Carencio, I don't think I actually ever said hi to you. Hello. <laughs> I was just like, ah, oh, yes, Carencio is here. Indeed, hello. Um, you enjoy the entire thing out of chronological order? Oh, no. No idea what's happening, but you're slowly starting to get an idea. The picture will be much clearer once you actually are able to see all the chapters. <laughs> but yes. Um, but also, like, I just joke around when I'm stressed about stuff is like a big mood. I didn't realize how much I did that or how much I was, like, constantly doing japes or, like, trying to make people laugh until you, until, like, you know, occasions where I get, you know, I'm trying to keep it light and the other person is not laughing and I'm like, oh, wait a second, they, what am I doing? Oh, I guess I am doing that thing. Oops. Also, they're not buying it. <laughs> uh, gender spoilers. <laughs> ah, oh, gender triangle. Yeah, that's chapters three and four. You're almost there. But, um, yeah. I <laughs> This is actually one of the most striking moments of this where I was like, oh fuck me. I was trying to I was in like a was in like a meeting with one of my teachers and we were trying to sort out the ascent assignment deadline stuff and I was trying to I guess trying to keep it light and she was like not having it and being overall pretty serious and I was like, oh, you know, have not realized until around this point of time that uh, I guess that's something I do a lot. Anyway, yeah, I'm feeling I'm feeling what Z's putting down right now, basically. <laughs> oh, big unemployed quarantine dude. Yeah, chapter one was a lot. Mm -hmm. What's the opposite of vibing? Uh, repelling? Maybe? <laughs> That's my suffering. Another good one. Presently we're aware of the harsh harshness of reality. Mm -hmm. Alright, I'm gonna end this action myself and uh, keep reading here. You just need to relax. Don't think about all this gar don't think about all this garbage constantly. At least take a break from it at from it all at night. Other people can worry about the hard stuff for, stuff for you now. That's what all your obsequious clown helpers are for. Here, let me talk you off. Yeah, I don't know if I should drink this. I'm kind of fucked up on pain meds. Oh yeah, good point. Well, more for me then. Well. <laughs> 
I don't remember you being this much of a wine mom before all this. I must have done this to you, didn't I? <laughs> No, I've just been so stressed. I've never been through anything in my life like what the last couple weeks were like. With you sick and dealing with the government and my parents and the fandom and the media going ballistic over this. I've had to find ways to cope. So that, I didn't pick that up on my first read through, but that's something I think to keep an eye on. Z makes a comment about how much wine Abby's drinking. Specifically being like a wine mom, but you know, the wine is an operative part of that. And Abby's response was, I've had to find ways to cope. So I'm a little worried that a future plot lines may involve Abby getting a little bit dependent on alcohol. Um, but that was something I just picked up on uh, as I was doing the second read through now. Um, but, uh, yeah. Abby literally didn't touch the wine before he entered their home. Mm, that's a point as well. Um, Abby Catholicism. <laughs> but, um... Indeed, indeed. Um, that's something I think to keep in the back pocket, so to speak. I'm sorry. God, I should have thought it through, what this was going to be like for you. Don't be sorry. I've been right here, watch, watching how all this unfolded. You got fucked over by the cops and all you wanted to do was fight back. And that was like... And that like, got all mixed up with your new project. And probably no one out there can possibly understand the truth about why you felt like you had to take it this far. But I do. Yeah. That's always been the problem. When you're under attack by murderous assholes with all the power and laws on their side, you can roll over and die, run away or whatever, or you can fight. But once you start fighting, the question always is, when do you ever stop? And then you realize you can't. Because once you start, you establish yourself as a threat to them, and they'll stop at nothing to put you down. So it turns out you can't stop fighting until the threat is completely wiped out, or they'll just keep coming. Then the question becomes, who's they? Is it just the police? Well, who the fuck did they work for? Turns out they is really the whole system. All corporate and state power. If they constantly show they want you dead if you're willing to fight back at, the, at all, then what choice do you have but to, but to keep fighting to the death? <sighs> oh yeah, I forgot to comment. We had a music cut and then... It's back in here when we cut back to Abby. <laughs> well, on to energy. Mm -hmm. But, um... Yeah. Definitely. Big tonal shift, but, like, that's just it, right? Yikes. But, yeah, you're totally right. I can see it now. It's not like I even wanted this. Taking over a whole island? That wasn't really in the blueprint. They forced my hand, though. I'm just tired. Well, the Rona really wiped you out. I know, I mean, mentally, too. I spent the last two weeks in and out of a COVID and pain med fog. But that day I got shot. Some real serious shit happened that day. Which I had barely any time to process with my rational brain. Yeah, you lost a lot that day. You found out about your mom, and then Percy. 
I felt so sorry for you, but I haven't known what to say. Do you want to talk about it? Man, which one? Both of those topics are two completely different conversations. Either one you want. Notice there's planes in the sky. That's an, an aside that I'm also just picking up on now. There's planes uh, flying overhead. Gonna assume that they have some sort of Jubilite association just because of them specifically talking about locking down the airports. Um, but they could also be some kind of government surveillance. And which one? Both, right. Either one you want. Either one you want. I'm not prepared at all for whatever the conversation about my mom could be, or would be. As for Percy, don't know what to say. Just sucks. I know you always like to tease him, but it seemed to me like you actually really liked him. It's okay to mourn for a person you care about. I don't think I liked him like that, though. It's more complicated. Isn't he still on your unlock screen? Oh, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. It sounds like you did like him like that. Ah, uh, good night, Phoenix. Have, <laughs> have a good sleep. Yeah, long weeks all around. Have a nice sleep. Good night, good night. And see you around for the next one. Abby. Percy was my soldier, and he died because of me. He died for this cause. He died because I sent him down this road, and he never even knew what I was signing him up for. Your soldier, huh? Okay, if you insist that's how it was. But just remember I'm your friend, and you can talk to me. You don't have to run away from your feelings forever. I'm not running away from shit, it's the truth. It's true about all these people here, and all over the world now. They all signed up for something I started, which could end up very badly for everyone if I fuck anything else up. But it's not like I can just stop. The fate of too many people depends on me now, and the forces are we're attacking here legitimately are quite evil. So I can't shake the feeling that this is all important work to be doing, in addition to just being a necessity of survival. And then my insane dreams keep reaffirming this. Dreams? Yeah, they've been getting more intense. You mean the same kind of dreams which inspired your manifesto? Yes, I've had some more while I was sick. They're more vivid than ever. He speaks to me more clearly now. Who? Riotous, the mythical clown god my brain made up who is probably fake, but now I'm not even sure about that, so maybe I'm going crazy. Or maybe it was just the disease wreaking havoc on my mind. I'm sure that was it. I don't think you should start drinking your own Kool-Aid on this lore. I mean, it's neat and all, but I'm not that serious. I think it's just my subconscious talking to me. But it's very lucid stuff. All this material I'm spreading around, it's like a vision from some other place. And it feels like it all has some intense need to spread itself throughout the universe. Like colonizing the world, overriding our various nations and cultures, but without any actual invasions. Instead, it's more like it's being channeled through me from a place we can't even comprehend. So you mean like imperialism? Isn't that bad though? I thought your manifesto was on record as saying that all sucks. It does. That's the, it does, the kind that's been practiced on Earth. And if aliens sent ships to Earth and conquered us, that would be bad too. But I think this is something different. I have no idea if it's good or bad, really, but if it catches on with everyone and turns out to be what cures this planet of shit like injustice, economic inequality, and all that, could it really be that bad? I don't think I'm qualified to answer that, but it sounds a bit like a rationalization. Maybe the kind that more traditional imperialists have used to justify expanding their own influence in the past. Like they could have said, if only we invade this poor country or that one, just think of all the boons our advanced society could give them. New science and medicine or whatever, or new forms of morality because our religion is better than theirs. Stuff like that, you know? 
Yeah, you could be right. I gotta stop thinking like this. Like these are anything but weird dreams. Or telling myself this is all any deeper than just some story I wrote. It's just a story. It's just a story. Ballad troll name. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> um. Psychic colonials? Hmm. Yeah, there's another way that the title can be broken down. So Z doesn't think Riotus is real. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a reasonable perspective to take at this point. That she, up till now, did not think that Riotus was real. And was a result of her previous poor mental health. Like, I think that's a pretty reasonable stance to take. <laughs> um. But, yeah. But yeah, like Jan like Z is starting to question more. Um, the yeah, Z is starting starting to question that now, though, starting to question that previous assumption. Hello, Vivian Dev. Uh, jade nails, jade text, and jade blooded obsession with propagating the species. Mm hmm. Good catch. Yeah. Yeah, Z's back and forth on it now. For sure. Ugh, it's driving me crazy! So stop thinking about all your clown lore for a little while. Just rest. You're still recovering, remember? Ugh, no, it's not even that. It's that clown girl, Jocelyne. It's still gnawing at me. Where do I know her from? I have no idea. To be honest, there are just way too many fucking clowns for me to even keep track anymore. And they all have clown Sona names and faces, and sometimes people even change to different ones, so who even knows who anyone is anymore? Wasn't that the point? Your manifesto said it's all about, like, malleability of identity. Like, take total control of who you are. Nobody else gets to decide, not your parents or the government or whatever, right? Yeah, still, just have such a weird feeling about it. You should just try to sleep soon. Let me clean up, then I'll help you upstairs, okay? Yeah. And off she goes. I'm just gonna have a quick drink of water. Yep, says, 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 says. Something occurs to you. It was that tattoo. We can now see it says Dharma. I don't know. I haven't located specifically what that tattoo is, whether it's what that symbol is associated with. Um, I mean, it says Dharma on it, but other than that. <sighs> Haven't you seen it before? And then it hits you. You open your now massive list of haters. You scroll all the way to the top where the oldest aunties are. The one you click on is the very first, actually. Candace Schmandis. Joculine couldn't really be. Could she? It is. It's her. This was the first bitch who cancelled you! Again, we have excellent use of JPEG artifacting and the glow effect uh, to display intensity of emotion. Mm. 
Don't kill her, she'll become a clown murder. Yes, end of chapter six. So, it appears the most enthusiastic leader of, the ring, of ring three uh, is someone who's previously had a rather contentious relationship with Z. Um, yeah, I mean, this could be, I mean, there's two kind of clearer pathways that this could be, which would be, um, that Candace Schmandis has put a lot of time and energy and dedication into infiltrating Z's ranks to completely fuck over their whole operation, or there's, she's just a genuine convert hoping to prove to Z that she's bettered herself. Um, she seems a little too power hungry to me for it to be the first one. Or for it to be the second one. Um, especially with all of the like backhanded comments towards Abby. I saw some theorizing that she may be gunning to, like, take Abby's place entirely. Um, being the one non-clown among clowns or being the one clown among humans? Um, I think being the one non non-clown among clowns? But I'm, I'm biased. Um, mm, I don't know about making that comment. Um, mm. Oh, yeah. Z's gonna kill her anyway, and then we get clown murdered him. Uh. But, um... Yeah, Z's fucking pissed. I think that's a reasonable reaction, actually, to be very mad. Um, but we'll just have to wait and see. Oh, the cast list! Right, we have to get back to the cast list. Yeah, Z confronting her will not be peaceful by any means. Absolutely not, for sure. Um... It, yeah, it would be more interesting to explore if he had actually converted to Jubilatism. But from the cards that are already on the table, I'm not detecting that as... A, like, I'm, I'm feeling more hints towards uh, usurping things. So, we have here... The clown sonas of all of the boaters who were told to remain in plain clothes before. Z does wake up every morning and choose violence. <laughs> ah, but yes, obsession is a hell of a drug. Um, I believe the order is the same, so we'll just have to do a little flip back and forth. Um, yes, we start up. The Boaters, we have Stash, Goodyear, Nintendo, and Hardbody becoming Churlish McGee the Second, Beeswax Panini, <laughs> Gravy Canoe, and Super Silas Garbanzo. And yes, there are some gender changes between the voter between the plain clothes and the clown sonas. A lot more clown faces happening down here, that's for sure. Um Again, we return to the top. We have Violet, Bryce, Cutlass, and Salty. Um, again. Shift in... Oh no, wait a second. This is the wrong row of clowns. This is the right row of clowns. Yeah. Shift in gender once again. But now we have Chattanooga Marmalade, Pipsqueak Guffaw, Butternose the Fourth, and Platypus Mugbuster. <laughs> <laughs> and 
You all ever sabotage a cloud based insurrectionary movement over Instagram discourse? Oh boy. Uh, no, we don't know why Z was cancelled in the first place. And I'd kind of thought from the beginning that, like, when the gender stuff came up, she was like, this stuff is getting close to what I was cancelled for in the first place. And that's kind of the, I think that the, the probably the most information that we'll get. I feel like it won't be fully elaborated on because it's very easy at that point for the focus of the story and or at least at the very least definitely the focus of fan discourse to become whether or not Z should have been cancelled in the first place. Um and I feel like that's not where as he wants the focus to be, that's the opposite of the point he's trying to make here. <laughs> um, and it would, I, it would likely be a distraction to the larger picture. So I feel like it's not likely to come into the picture. Cancel for trying to fuck a clown while I'm drunk. Maybe. Country southern horror movie antagonist. Pipsqueak guffaw. Yeah, I can see that for sure. We got, uh, three more voters here. Spaghetti Feet, Royal, and Nemo. And, uh, Spaghetti Feet is just Spaghetti Feet. <laughs> then we have, in addition, Noodle Parade, the eighth, and Horse Lips, Scuttlebutt. Again, lots more clown faces happening in this ginger spot. And finally, the grand reveal of the names of everyone in Ring 3. I'm sure we'll get a lot more screen time from going into later chapters. Starting, of course, with Joculine. Uh, Z probably just said there's no such thing as men and women. The spectrum was cancelled because some people like gender. I don't know. It's possible. But, uh... Yes. Going across, we have this horned fellow, Uncle Imbroglio. And the third is Chancellor Poppycock. We continue forward. There is uh, this tall fellow, a spruce galoot. This one's literally just Andrew Hussey. <laughs> he is a character in his own... He has inserted himself into Ring 3. Good for him. Um, <laughs> but uh, not a bad guess is considering the nature of the turn and philosophy behind it. But uh, yeah, uh, it's also Chamomile Giddyup. Um, I feel so seen. Thank you, Mr. Hussey. Um, <laughs> that's, uh, uh, yeah. Oh god, Alice, stop. That's horrible. Thanks, I fucking hate it. <laughs> uh, it's just an alternate timeline IRL, has he? And yeah, <laughs> imagine trying to imagine being cis. Ugh. Uh. Camel Giddy Up. Yep. Thanks, Hussy. Anyway, here's an, here's another three. We have this guy, Plum Ruckus, and with a nice plum-colored sweater. Umbrellope. Um, or Umbrellope. I'm not sure what the name is. The, it's definitely a mash of two words. I'm thinking like umbrella and a lope. I have no fucking idea what the connection of those are. Dog Food Fiddle Six. <laughs> Don't know how he wasn't in Nantucket in June 2020. <laughs> he could have been. <laughs> um. Oh, Umbrella P like Calliope? Maybe. Yeah, Umbrella P. Hmm. Makes me think of Penelope. Um, yeah. Dog food fiddlesticks with a rather artful jester hat going on. 
And at the bottom we have M Maradville with the uh, mask. Paddywhack Zanzibar with the rainbow who, uh, headband, hair tie, or whatever. And Mizzlebip, which was the one that was in the trailer. And Mizzlebip's gender is not an icon we have seen for any other character. It's just the fucking Discord pleading face emoji. <laughs> Uh, Marauder Vaudeville. Ah, good catch. The Instagram. Oh yes, there was not Ah, oh, crap! I forgot to find that or take a screen cap or whatever. But yeah, there was an Instagram com comment asking if, if where Hussey was on the gender triangle, and he's just like, "You'll find it soon enough." And if we scroll up, we see that it is clown. He is full clown. But, um, that's just the hegemonic brew. Mm. HB in his fucking horse calendar. But yeah, fucking Mizzlebip. As, yeah, with the fucking pleading face emoji as, as, a, as their gender. Uh, I'm surprised. Yeah, no. It's, it's not surprising at all. But that is the additions to the cast page for this volume and that is the volume that is chapter 6 next week we do have chapter 7 um, so look forward to that once again Sonic and Homestuck are on hiatus at the moment until my school term ends which is mid-April, so just in time for 413 celebrations, we can have, uh, we can be back at Homestuck. Um, but yes, that is today, and that is up to current Cyclonials. Clown Rodeo just keeps riding on. Mm, but yes, we already knew that Hesse was full clown. Mm -hmm. Oh, happy birthday to your Nana. <laughs> um, obliterating your spirit through only thinking about school and work. Oh, yeah. I've been trying to strike a balance between doing that and not doing that, and it's uh, not been working. <laughs> anyway... <gasps> The carousel spins on indeed, and spin on it will next weekend with chapter 7 of Cyclonials. Speaking of schoolwork, I gotta skedaddle and keep um, chugging forward. Gotta get some stuff done. Thank you all so much for uh, hanging out, coming, chilling, all the lovely conversation today. Um, Yes. I think that's, uh, yeah. Not so many streams to promote these days, but they'll be coming back soon. Y'all, three more weeks. Let's fucking go. Three fucking weeks. Okay. See y'all next weekend for chapter seven. Much appreciate all of your wonderful support. Have a wonderful rest of your day and rest of your week until I see you all again. Good night.